Apartment clean and candles dim. In the background, a choir singing hymn. Just the two of you now. An invitation via arched eyebrow. Prolonged eye contact. The air with tension packed. Nothing shall hinder this love found on Tinder. Emotions enamored, heartfelt, love struck. Or maybe it's just the desire to fo- Okay, let's all relax. Find luck in the dating pool is what I was going to say. So you're in the unfortunate position of having to make handmade pasta to save a fledgling relationship. Boy, can we all empathize. Fortunately, it's really not that complex. Essentially, pasta is just a mix of flour and water, kneaded into a dough, formed into shapes, and cooked in boiling water. Know what the difference between fresh and dried pasta is? The first three steps, which translates to a ton of effort on your part. The rabbit hole relating to breads, types of flours, and baking techniques is shockingly deep, filled with complex chemical interactions, mired in agricultural history, and is relatively uninteresting to me. So we will avoid a deep explanation in favor of the two million other videos that already talk about it. In short, you can make pasta with any type of flour. Using all-purpose flour is fine. Durham flour isn't special. It's just a species of wheat that grows a hard grain. Semolina is a component of durum grain that, when ground, produces semolina flour, which has a little bit more gluten than all-purpose flour, so it will result in microscopically chewier pasta. Zero zero in the flour I'm using refers to a slightly finer grind, meaning my pasta will be a bit smoother than pasta made from this stuff, but you don't need it. Measure out 100 grams of flour per person. 100 grams is a medium serving size, and fresh pasta doesn't keep too well, so don't go overboard on leftovers. Into a pile, dig a well, and drop in one egg per 100 grams of flour. Begin mixing the flour into eggs a little bit at a time until a shaggy dough forms. From there, get messy and, like mathematics, use your digits. You'll notice that the dough becomes smooth and elastic after some time. Keep kneading. Like, knead more than you think. About 10 minutes. It'll hurt. But during this time, you'll be able to reflect on how foolish it was to promise to make fresh pasta in the 21st century when the dried stuff is absolutely fine. To prevent the dough from drying out, wrap it in plastic and let rest for 30 minutes to allow the gluten to develop. Time out, time out. What the heck is gluten development? People love saying it, but no one ever explains what it means. When a plant grows seeds, the seeds need energy and material in order to sprout and survive on their own. That energy comes from stored proteins. Gluten refers to two protein structures that comprise 90% of the proteins in wheat seeds, glutenins and glidins. When wheat is milled, these proteins just exist in the flour and don't really do anything. But when you introduce moisture, a chemical reaction called disulfide bonding begins to occur. The mechanical agitation of kneading encourages the glutenins and glidins to interact, and they begin to form a matrix of bonds to each other. This matrix is elastic and results in the chewy sensation of bread. The more you knead, the more glutenins react with glidins, and they form larger matrices. When bread rises, it captures the air in bubbles, resulting in the structure you see when slicing into a risen bread product. If you have celiac disease, your immune system produces antibodies when your small intestine comes into contact with gluten. This causes the villi of the small intestine to shorten and will produce some undesirable symptoms. Celiac disease affects 1% of humans, while 8% are a little bit more sensitive to gluten. Gluten sensitivity is also the only known genetic condition that is proportionally affected by social media followers. After the allotted time, you can roll out the dough thin with a rolling pin and cut into strips, but a pasta roller is a bit more convenient. Roll out the dough to your desired thinness. Cutting in half and folding as the sheets become uncomfortably long. Cut to your desired shape, lightly flour and then twist into little nests. Fill a pot with water and salt generously, or don't. To be honest, I'm finding it difficult to care because I've been making 40 cents worth of pasta for an hour. Fresh pasta cooks faster than dried because it already contains moisture, so only cook for a couple minutes while stirring frequently. You could drain and plate with the sauce on top, but alternatively, you can finish cooking the pasta in the sauce itself. Once complete, using a meat skewer, twirl out the pasta and deposit on the plate. Spoon a little bit more sauce on top and finish with some grated Parmesan and a sprinkly of parsley. Hey, this looks pretty sharp, and good luck out there. Hope everything turns out. Buon appetito. Yeah, I can speak a bit of Italian. Pretty good, right, Nona? Oh, no, thank you. I'm so full, I couldn't eat anymore. Ow, stop it. You're hurting me. Let go of my arm. No, I can't eat anymore. No, don't make me...